All right, folks, why did I write the book Why Fear? How the Brownie of America is making white folks lose their minds? Because it's actually happening before our very eyes. Look at what's happening in Florida uh, as we speak. Governor Ron DeSantis has been involved in this culture war because he is a trying to appeal to white voters, white Republican voters, as he is trying to run for president in 2024. He, of course, decimated uh, black congressional districts, ignoring the state legislature and choosing to push forward his own illegal maps. Then, of course, he pushed forth this so-called anti-woke act uh, that bans the teaching of critical race theory. It has led to all sorts of uh, drama in Florida uh, because they frankly are labeling, labeling anything dealing with race, critical race theory. Now he's blocked a new advancement placement course for high school students on African-American studies. His Florida Department of Education Office of Articulation, which approves the AP curriculum, vetoed the program because it was inexplicably contrary to Florida law and significantly lacked educational value. The FDOE did not elaborate on what the agency found to be objectionable. The rejection, the rejection, the advancement placement African-American studies course is again part of the Sanders' continuing effort to ban anything dealing with race from being taught in Florida schools. This is what you're dealing with there in Florida. And trust me, what you see is this happening across the country. The state enacted a law that banned the teaching of the history of systemic racism in the United States and materials from the 1619 Project. Yeah, seriously, last year again, he signed a bill restricting how schools can discuss race with students. In addition to that, remember, uh, they also, he was also pushing this bill that anything that made white people uncomfortable could not be discussed, not just in schools, but even by companies. A even a judge said, okay, you went too damn far, let's stop that. Joining us now is Fentress Driscoll. Uh, she is a state representative. Uh, she's, a, first of all, the Florida State Representative Minority Leader. Glad to have you uh, on the show. Um, what's shameful here is to have the Florida Department of Education refuse to say what they found to be objectionable, why they say it lacked any educational value. That's right. So thank you, Roland, for, for having me. And you're right. They did not name the law that this high school class violated or even which part of the curriculum went against Florida law. The state didn't offer any course or remedy, just a blanket rejection. And so to say that it offers no, uh, no, no real value, I think that's the greatest insult of all, because you have to ask yourself the question, what was so offensive about this course? This AP African-American Studies course was designed to teach students about ancient African civilization. So think about that. Traditionally, our current introduction to black history in the United States starts with the enslavement of black people, not the centuries of rich culture that preceded slavery. We existed way before the slave markets in Charleston and New Orleans and St. Augustine. So, you know, why does this course about bending, uh, that begins African-American history at the point of freedom in order to show the progression of a group of people working their way back to that freedom scare this governor so much? And here's the deal. You're, you're actually scared of history? I mean, and, that, that, and, and, and that's what... But the real deal here, they are scared of, they don't want anything black. And, 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 and I keep telling people, this was always the strategy. You have these moms for liberty, they're taking over school district, school boards. I've been warning people about this here. They've taken over a significant number of school boards in South Carolina. They're pushing out black superintendents. These, this is white fear. They want to hold onto power and they do not want white children and other children taught anything about the reality of race in the United States in our history. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out, uh, Roland, that we cannot look at what happened, what's happening here with this AP African American History course in a vacuum. What I need you to know is this, and, and you, I think you teed this up perfectly in your intro. You know, first, they gerrymandered black congressional districts from four to two, meaning that they took Floridians' black representation in Congress and cut it in half. Then they overreacted to CRT allegedly being caught in grade school, which let me be crystal clear, Republicans in Florida have been in control of the state legislature and the governor's mansion since the 90s. So they've been in control of educational policy. 
let me tell you, they would not allow CRT to be taught then. It's not being taught now. They keep creating these boogeymen to try to entice, entice their political base and get them all scared about things that are not really happening. Now we're watching as Governor DeSantis is trying to roll back diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, telling employers what they can and cannot do with that and opening them up to lawsuits if they have diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts that make people feel uncomfortable. And then they also are attacking hiring practices and de and in our university system. I don't believe that he's going to stop here with this AP African American history course. This really is first of many attempts to whitewash history in order to soothe emotionally fragile people. And I'm just so glad that you are covering this story tonight because we need people to pay attention to what is happening in Florida. Please know too that Ron DeSantis wants to run for president of the United States in 2024. We need not just Floridians to pay attention, but for the entire country, because this is dangerous, a very dangerous progression of events. This is him. This is a direct appeal to white conservative voters. I keep Donald Trump, when he launched his uh, uh, campaign, he purposely pushed the buttons of white fear. This is Ron DeSantis trying to ride that same white fear roller coaster into the Republican nomination and into the White House in 2024. Yeah, and I, I feel like he's trying to out Trump Trump is, is kind of what we're watching happen. Well, and- well, because he knows it works. He knows, look, we saw it. We saw it in, two, in 2022. We saw, first of all, the election in 2021. All of a sudden, yeah. Fox News and everybody, CRT, CRT, CRT. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, the migrants showing up on the border. Anything dealing with race, they are, they, they are ramping up because it's a direct appeal to white conservative voters saying, see, they're coming, they're coming, they're taking over. The whole uh, freaking out about great replacement theory, the exact same thing. It ain't our fault why white folks stop having babies. The reason the white population is dropping, they stop having kids. And you even had some of them state their opposition to Roe v. Wade was because they were losing numerical numbers. Well, the point I want to make, though, is that the collateral damage is really just too much. Yep. We're watching this play out in Florida, right? Where now you have just that the tensions are high. The temperature has been ratcheted up. We know this is already was happening throughout the country under Donald Trump, but it's happening here in a very acute way. You look at what happened in the 2022 midterm elections and the rest of the country rejected extremist policies, actually, where the Trump candidates were on the ballot. Typically, they tended to lose. That was not the case in Florida. Right. Like it looked like, you know, Ron DeSantis won by 20 points. But what we're seeing from the data that's now least about the election, it wasn't so much that there was a red wave. It was more so that Democrats stayed home. We need people to be educated and to understand what is happening and what is at stake because he won't stop at Florida. He wants to take this brand of divisiveness to national politics. And we really need to make sure that that does not happen, that he does not succeed. Uh, That is exactly the case right there. Representative Driscoll, we certainly appreciate you joining us. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, Game recognized game, uh, Greg. uh, And people need to understand this is the Republican Party. This is their strategy. And this is DeSantis trying to say to white folks, I'm your man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Greg, you're on mute. My bad, because I was cussing for some of it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Reese, there's your bailiwick, sis. I can't hear <laughs> you. You <laughs> chefs discuss. I'm not good at <laughs> that good at I um I enjoy Ron DeSantis. I like Ron DeSantis. I embrace him. He is a wonderful example of a, a failed white man, a rumpled pufferfish of a man uh, with no charisma, a couple of Ivy League degrees, and has failed upward. Um, he will crash and burn on the national scene. Uh, he gets away with this, and I'm glad that Representative Driscoll said what she said. You know, you know, people have to go out and vote. It's easier to do what Ron DeSantis has done when people don't get in and wage war. And war includes the ballot. Not the only thing, but it is one of the things. Now, now I worked on that course. I was one of many scholars, academics, teachers, K-12, who came in with ideas over the last several years and put that course together. Here's what that punk puffer fish in his little, you know, a little bit too big suit with no charisma, who will fail if when he gets on the national stage. So, Mark, so hold on one second. So, Greg, Greg, you say the, the particular course that they're rejecting, you uh, uh, worked on that? The I was one. I was one of many. There were there were a number of scholars uh, two summers ago. 
I spent the summer looking at the curriculum framework. So it's very satisfying to hear Representative uh, Finch uh, talk about the fact that that course doesn't start in slavery. Now, you know, that's one of our deep things in Africana studies. You don't start your history with slavery. And so the fact that it made it in there, I take great pride in being one of the people who push for that. But here's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, this punk in Florida and his punk legislative friends and all his buddies down there, uh, they'll be in court. See, this is the pilot program. In fact, we hosted the kickoff pilot uh, uh, convening of the teachers, the 60 or so, in including a couple of master teachers from Houston, by the way, Roland, uh, two sisters who, who piloted the course in Houston this past uh, fall. We hosted them at Howard this summer for a, a kind of convening to talk about how to teach the class and this kind of thing. So it's a pilot right now, which means students taking it won't be able to take uh, take it and get uh, the AP score for college credit. Beginning around 2025, however, they will. Uh, that means that becomes federal, you punk. But see, this ain't about being able to enforce this. Why? Because if you get an AP score of a four or five, you then transfer that credit into the university. Well, what happens to every student in Florida who couldn't take that class and then wants to transfer that credit to Princeton or Howard or North Carolina State or North Carolina Central? Well, they've been deprived of that. This won't stand up in court. This is a puffer fish, a punk, and he's going to burn out on the national stage. And I'm, for one, am, am here for it. I am here for it. You know Donald Trump, punk. Let's let's dance. All right, folks, back to our roadblock unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 